Hello and welcome back, and that's right, currently moving and migrating stuff over from the old studio to the new studio, currently about 50%, don't worry, we're still going to have that background shelf thing going on, we've got two little filming bits going on here, but during the course of this migration, I saw a lot of users on the current run up towards Prime Day and a bunch of seasonal stuff, asking, what's the best NAS right now, halfway through 2024 to buy for about 500 Nika, pounds, dollars, euros, or what? Ever. And that's what this video is. Me at this still hastily in progress desk and what I would argue is the noisiest chair in the world. I'm going to help you find the best NAS right now in desktop for about 500 Nika. Bear in mind, I say about, some of the solutions I'm going to talk about are a little above, some of them are a little below, but ultimately all of these are NAS solutions that I would argue you can do pretty much anything you are going to need for about 500 Nika, not including the tax and not including your storage media. So without further ado, let's crack on with number one. You know, I never thought I'd start a video like this with an Asus store. Don't get me wrong, they are a good brand, that's not a diss, but there's no denying that when it comes to the last few years, up until last year, when it came to getting the best NAS out there as a good balancing act between performance and hardware, and even throwing in the software, Asus store weren't the front runners. But last year, all of that changed with this. This is the Flash Store 6, a 6 NVMe flash system. Rocking out the gate uh, with an Intel Celeron processor inside the N5105. That combined with dual port uh, 2.5 gigabit Ethernet there on the rear, 4 gig of memory that can be upgraded up to 16 gig, and overall a hugely port rich system for 6 NVMEs was already pretty darn attractive. But when we saw the introductory price point at between 450 and 499, it really blew people away. At the time of launch, you couldn't get that kind of hardware. Even DIY for that price, you just simply couldn't build it. Now, a year later, we're seeing one that you can get close to that at the DIY level there. Um, and also on top of that, Asus Store themselves have revealed the second generation to this currently in development in the Gen 2. With a Ryzen CPU with dual port 10G and Gen 4 NVMe slots there. And they're targeting the end of 2024 for that. That also means that this is becoming increasingly affordable as availability has increased. But also, I've seen this device arrive at numerous different regions retailers on sale, most recently on Amazon themselves, flogging this device remarkably cheap. Again, if you're looking for an affordable flash system that can run virtual machines, can run containers, can run storage shares, run backups, and you want to take advantage of a myriad of client apps, you'll be very hard pushed, pushed to defeat this as a flash NAS halfway through 2024. If you thought starting this list with an Asus Store NAS was already mucking around with the formula somewhat, let me introduce you to this. This is the Terramaster F4424 Pro. Now, right now, this is available for 599 so over my 500 Nika price tag, although I have seen it on sale in some retailers for 499 But there's also a non-pro version as well that knocks around for between 459 to 499 Now, these systems, um, standard and pro respectively, arrive with either the N100, Intel 12th Gen, um, or the Lake uh, quad-core processor, or the N305, an 8-core i3 processor there, arriving with 8 gig of DDR5 memory that can be scaled up to 32 gig just like that. Both of them arrive with 2.5 gigabit Ethernet. They also both arrive with then got two NVMe slots inside. So four SATA slots for hard drives up to 24 TB and two NVMe slots at Gen 3 times 2 that allow you to have super fast storage pools or caching. Alongside that, although the software on the TerraMaster platform isn't as advanced as say a Synology or a QNAP, I will say they've nailed down the fundamentals. You've got virtual machine deployment, you've got container deployment, you've got your shares, you've got um, a Decent enough client application, although not as widespread as some of the other brands out there. And I would argue, although their software is nowhere near as evolved as that as Synology or QNAP, the base level hardware you are getting in the TerraMaster is damn near unbeatable. Look at the reviews if you don't believe me. On top of that, TOS is improving. They've introduced that isolation mode. They've introduced write once, read many. They've introduced, in, introduced encryption. They've introduced a number of key features that larger, bigger brands have had for a while, but they are including it on their much more affordable hardware. So if you're looking for the most powerful hardware on the list today, I'm not going to say this is the most powerful, but for the price tag and availability and how often it's on sale, the 424 and 424 Pro are damn near hard to beat.
there it is. You saw it coming. There was always going to be a Synology on this list. And right now, Synology, although it's been argued that they have been slightly taking their foot off the gas when it comes to the enthusiast kind of home prosumer tier, I'd say for the 500 Nicker mark, the Synology DS424 Plus is probably the best pick of the litter for that price tag. Now, I'm not going to say the hardware is going to blow you away. Frankly, it won't. The CPU inside is a relatively old 2019 generation Intel Celeron J4125. Most brands have moved away from that. It also arrives with 2 gig of DDR4 memory that can be upgraded up to a weird 6 gig, an odd number. Um, and the system arrives with 1 gigabit Ethernet there on the rear on two ports. So I know a number of you are like, what the hell is this thing doing in your list, Rob? And it's a reasonable enough question. Well, a few things. Number one, it's one of a small range of Synology solutions that allow you to take advantage of M2 NVMe storage pools. You have to take advantage of their drives, but it has to be said that this is one of the few systems from the brand that actually supports that option. On top of that, it's one of the lowest, with only the DS224 Plus being the exception, one of the lowest priced systems to give you access to the full Synology DSM experience. Every single application, every single service, from virtual machines and containers all the way through to the collaboration suite and all the way to backup and active backup suite and surveillance and that, all of them run on this system. Alongside that is probably the recommended Synology Plex NAS right now, unless you're looking at raw CPU power and not looking at things like transcoding. Um, I would say right now, for the Synology package, because remember, that's what you're buying into with this system, not the hardware. It's the best option out there. If what you care about is an operating system that runs the system and keeps things incredibly user-friendly and the lowest bar for skill to jump off the cloud and onto your own NAS, this is a solid choice for you. But I will throw out there a suggestion that maybe if you've got a bit more bunts to play with, to look at the DS923 Plus. It rocks around for about 599. And to really make the most of it, you have to take advantage of a 10 gig upgrade that's gonna cost you another 120, 150. That's why I didn't really make the cut. But if you've got a bit of money to throw at it, and what you want is that Synology DSM experience with a little bit more hardware under the belt, look at the DS923. But for the rest of you that have got home mid-tier utilization in mind, the DS423 Plus in the hardware stakes, a little bit underwhelming, but in terms of software capabilities and scope and utilization of that software and the client apps, it's a great pick in 2024. Heads, tails, salt, pepper, Synology, QNAP. There was always going to be a QNAP on this list. And I'll be straight with you. Whenever it is that QNAP decide to refresh this series, the TS-464, for something new, I'm genuinely going to be gutted. The TS-464 has been around now since spring, summer 2022, and it still manages to really push its muscles out amongst the rest of the 500 nicker give or take solutions in the market right now. With four individual SATA bays there, again, support up to 24 TB drives. It's got a couple of M2 NVMe slots inside, again, whether you want to use them for caching, use them for storage boards, you don't have the own party restrictions that Synology are throwing at you. You can also use those storage base for a tiered storage system called Q-Tier, which automatically moves frequently accessed data onto the SSDs, and legacy warm and cold data can live on the hard drives. It moves it around internally, and thereby speeding up access to the more frequently used data internally. On top of that, on the rear of the system, not only have we got a couple of 2.5 gigabit Ethernet ports, we've also got a PCIe upgrade slot there. That PCIe upgrade slot allows you to Add single and dual port 10 GBE. It allows you to add M2 NVMe upgrade. It allows you to add AI assisted uh, cards using the Google AI plugin um, um, add on for Coral to enhance some of the AI features of the system. Add a Wi Fi 7 card. Add USB ports in there. Moreover, get combo cards like the QM2 series that allow you to take advantage of combos of M2 NVMe and 10 GBE on a single card upgrade, allowing you to add more SSD storage better network bandwidth and the whole time the system chugging along nicely in the background. There's a reason that two years on this continues to be popular. Keep in mind of course that their software although has largely the same features as Synology DSM and I would argue a bunch of other ones that aren't available on Synology, I will add it is a slightly more inconsistent experience with a lot of design philosophies between applications sometimes being a little inconsistent. Sometimes of course when you're using the apps and services 
it just does too much and there are times which with QNAP software where it could just go hold up a minute you're doing too much slow down it doesn't do that it allows you to do loads where it's trying to be as customizable as possible to its detriment from time to time but nevertheless two years on for around 500 nicker this is a great balanced hardware software solution and probably one of the best examples of that across this entire range of solutions in this video but just keep in mind it has a steeper learning curve than that of Synology now this one probably surprised a few of you out there this is the link station n1 from link plus a brand largely associated with docking stations and laptops this noisy chair is driving me up the wall i'll say right now in terms of hardware this is all right it rocks out and you can purchase it on numerous websites for around $399 or pounds. That's at least how it's listed right now on Amazon. Originally arriving in the market over on uh, Indiegogo, a crowdfunding platform, users could get hold of it for around 200 nickel, which at that point was a crazy cheap price. Now, fast forward to now, now it's available on traditional retail again for around that 400 nickel pr price tag there. I'm not going to say the hardware is going to blow you away. It's got the same CPU as the QNAP and the Asus store that we've already discussed, the N5105. On top of that, it's got a couple of SATA 2.5 inch drives there on the front, alongside four M2 NVMe slots internally. It's a pure flash system allowing you to take advantage of lower price per terabyte SSDs in SATA form factor and performance SSDs there at the base at times one speed each. Uh, which is all fair and well, and I would say the port there on the rear, and I say port, notice no plural, there's only a single 2.5 gigabit Ethernet port there. There's 10 gig USB and an HDMI output, but overall, although the design is very nice, it's very petite and very low noise, I'll say right now that the reason it's in this list isn't because of any of the stuff I just said. The reason this is in the list is this arrives with Unraid. Now, unlike another brand that I'm going to talk about later in the video, they could have tried to develop their own NAS software, which takes years, by the way, to get right with the security, stability, performance, and AAA applications and appeal. It takes a very long time. Now, they could have tried to develop their own software and then had some harsh comparisons with Synology QNAP and stuff, but they didn't do that. They approached Lime Tech, Lime Technology, and Unraid. This device arrives with an Unraid license on board, a lifetime Unraid license. That means that you can take advantage of everything that Unraid gives, right the way up to the latest uh, Unraid 7 beta. That means you have got true flexibility in terms of what you can do with containers, with your storage management and more. But on top of that, you've got access to all of the features of ZFS. Unraid, particularly in Unraid 7, has been engaging and in installing and working with so many more of the tool set that are ZFS locked there. And taking advantage of the ZFS performance in a system like this with SSDs is going to be desirable, even with an Intel Celeron processor there. It doesn't have ECC memory, sadly, and it's got 16 gig of fixed memory, which is good on the one hand, but also means you can't scale up. But nonetheless, at 399, the fact that right now an unlimited lifetime license for Unraid changes hands for about 249 nicker, I believe, that's a great deal to get all of that hardware I mentioned and an Unraid license for 399. Did anyone else see this coming? I never thought I would feature Ugreen in one of these videos. The market for desktop NAS solutions is incredibly busy, more so I'd argue than any other tier of network attached storage. Nonetheless, when they did start revealing their solutions via crowdfunding sites like uh, Kickstarter, they had a whole range of two, four, six, eight, and a little four bay flash system out there that was changing hands at an incredibly affordable price. Fast forward to now, when the solutions appear to be just about to land at retail, and this system here, the DXP4800 Plus, is arriving at sub 500 nicker with an Intel Pentium processor inside, Gen 4 M2 NVMe slots on the base, again, for caching or for storage pools, You've got main storage bays that support up to 24 TB. On the front, you've not only got that USB Type-C port there at 10 gig, you've also got a high-speed SD card reader, weirdly rare. You've got their own kind of target design there on the casing, but probably most more, int more interesting than anything else, the system's got 10 GBE. That's right, this is the only system that I have found at this scale that arrived with 10 GBE, with that kind of hardware architecture inside and outside there. Now, in order to achieve that, 
you Green have made compromises. Let's not dick around. First and foremost, when it comes to uh, the software, much like we talked about just now with LinkStation and uh, the LinkStation M1, I should say, this system, although um, they have decided to go a, new, a different way at Ugreen by having their own software, the UGOS software, it is nowhere near as evolved as DSM from Synology, QTS from QNAP, ADM from Acer Store, or TOS from TerraMaster, or Unraid, or TrueNAS Scale, or TrueNAS Core, or Open Media Vault. But it does nail down the fundamentals. There is room for improvement in terms of security with two-step authentication, um, some of the certificate implementation there I'm not overly keen on. And I do think things like write once read many are absent along with some killer AAA applications there. So I'm definitely not going to be touting this in terms of its software, but I will highlight that um, it's been made very clear by Ugreen that if you choose to buy this hardware and then go ahead and use Unraid or TrueNAS or Open Media Vault or whatever, it won't affect your hardware warranty in a way that it would if you go for something like a QNAP. You can go for this system, buy it at its hardware, and keep that software to one side their own, or just overwrite it if you choose, because it arrives with an SSD inside, and instead stick on your own software of choice, software that's been around the block for a few decades, and that is what I'm getting at. This is a great solution for those that want a ready-built OS ready system. It doesn't have to be purely turnkey, but you can go for a pre-built NAS ready solution that includes the software that you want to use, be it an existing license or otherwise. I do think Ugreen are going to continue down this path with their solutions and create bigger and better NAS systems moving forward and hopefully improve on that software along the roadmap that they keep talking about. But even if they don't, you've got a great bit of hardware here for your NAS operating system of choice. But there you go, those are the solutions I'd say right now in terms of NAS, halfway through 2024 that are the best bang for your buck for about 500 nicker. Remember, just a bit under, just a bit above in some cases. I've done links to all of these along with a full article below detailing a lot more as well as links to individual reviews for every single one of these systems below. Also, there are links down below to get hold of these at shops like uh, Amazon, getting hold of it AliExpress, getting hold of it at B&M, stuff like that. So if you're going to go to those stores anyway and you found this video helpful those two things are very important if those things are true please use the links in the description to take you to those stores doing so will result in a small commission here to NAS compares it's just me and Eddie here and it allows us to keep doing what we do but apart from that thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time